Iyoko, upon a referral from the receiver for ideal finance, invited Ni Kote Jani for questioning on three allegations. 23 million CDs paid to a client, 200 acres of land he allegedly stole from Ideal Finance and unlawful use of Ideal Finance's funds to build a resort in Adam. According to the executive director of Iyoko, COP retired Frank Edupoku, the assets include vehicles and about 31 bank accounts belonging to him and the Ideal Group. We have two major objects. First, to investigate organized crime and then to trace poses of organized crime. As we speak now, we have frozen most of his as, uh, accounts. His bank accounts have been bank accounts have been frozen legally. We went to court and they had you know judgment for the accounts to be frozen. I have picked up information that you've frozen up to thirty one bank accounts. Is that accurate? That's true. That's true. We've frozen most almost and then we are we are trying to get information about other uh, accounts which may not be known to us, which are not come to our notice. And are these accounts belonging to ideal group or belonging to him as a person? Which ones are you Belonging to ideal group and him as a person. We are looking at the two. What other assets are you looking at? Uh, but as we speak now, we have also gotten judgment to you know, preserve most of his assets. Vehicles and landed properties of the applicant at Adna and near side street is Legon, have also been frozen and confirmed by the court. The office is continuing efforts to track and trace other assets in the form of vehicles, landed properties, a speedboat belonging to Adi Finance and Nico Tejan. A speedboat? A speedboat. So we go after anything that we believe, if it is disposed of, can get some money to be put into the accounts of the receiver. Is he collaborating? No, not, not to the best of my knowledge. If a person that you are investigating conceals their assets and you find out, is that a crime? Yeah, it is. Mr. Jani had argued that Iyoko was practically harassing him in a manner that undermined his status as a member of the Council of State. According to him, the receiver in the case of the collapse of defunct ideal finance did not afford him the opportunity to respond to issues against him before referring his case to Iyoko to be investigated. He maintained that the referral to Iyoko and subsequent invitations made to him to appear before the state agency and his arrest at some point all amount to harassment and abuse of his constitutionally guaranteed right to presumption of innocence. Mr. Jani prayed the court that, given his reputation in Ghana, both as a member of the Council of State and a prominent businessman, he is due damages for loss of reputation, injury to feeling and false imprisonment. But the court presided over by Justice Ifya Sewa Asari Boche ruled that Yoko, in its dealings with the Council of State member, has been fair and at all times acted within the mandate of its establishing law.